Hi there, everybody. This is one of the great rock and roll tracks of all time, Slow Down by Larry Williams. Let me just stop it there. And the saxophone player who plays on this record is one of the rock and roll and rhythm and blues greats, Plas Johnson. Now I'm going to talk in detail about some of the licks he plays in his solo, which comes later on in the track. But first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about that opening uh, riff, which goes through the 12 bar blues sequence. Now I call it a 12 bar blues and it is that pattern, but it's played over 24 bars. So the verses are 24 bars long. So instead of getting uh, four bars at the beginning on the one chord, you get eight and so on. Now the record is in the key of D. So to play along with the track, you're gonna need a G harmonica playing in second position. I will use different keys later on in the video as we look at how we can adapt some of the licks. So that first riff, which goes through the one chord, the four chord and the five chord is basically a sixth. Now, a sixth chord is basically the first, the third and the fifth, which are the three notes of a major chord. First, third and fifth. And then you add on the six. So you get first, third, fifth. Then the sixth. And then back to the fifth. Now, I've tabbed this out so that you'd play it like this. A little bit of a scoop when you play the third. But of course, it's well worth experimenting with how you can adapt that lick and play it in slightly different ways. So you could start with the chord. You can include some octaves. You could take it up to a higher register. There's a lot you can do with it. And I would urge you with all of the things that I discuss in these Mississippi saxophone videos to try transferring the licks into a higher register on the harmonica, try messing around with them, changing the feel, changing the order of the notes, that sort of thing. The idea is that the licks provide inspiration. We're not just copying everything exactly. OK, there's my rant for the day. Um, when we get to the four chord. That's how I've tabbed it out. But of course, you could use octaves. I'm, I'm avoiding the split at the end. OK, or I could take it up into the higher register. Again, experimenting. When we come to the five chord, now this is particularly interesting. You've got that half step bend on hole two draw to a full step bend on hole three draw. And it's really useful to practice that and master that because that's going to be a really useful couple of notes to use um, in various types of blues. OK, let's move on now to Plas Johnson's solo. His solo comes in at around one minute, 30 seconds. So let's just have a little listen, first of all, to what's going on at the start. <laughs> So we've got a little lick there that we can use. That lick there, as you've seen tabbed out, incorporates the three blow. You can use the two draw. If you're playing it fast, the, the three blow has got a slightly better flow to the, to the way the lick's played. But of course, we're adapting these licks, so you could easily slow it down. Put it in a swing context. I use the two draw there. And adapted it slightly there. So let's just change the groove and have a little listen to how that might sound. So I've got um, a backing track here in the key of E. So let's just put this on. Slightly 
adapted it the second time. So going back to the Plas Johnson solo, he plays that lick twice, and then we come up to a stop in the music where he plays a phrase which carries on into the four chord. So let's just have a little listen to what he does first of all. just so good. So this is lick two and lick three. I'll slow it down a little bit. Now that's what he plays and he's essentially using the blue scale. So you really do need to know your blue scale in second position. So let's look at the lick again. Starts off with this little phrase. Now, of course, you can take that on its own. Swing it up. Use octaves and splits. Use a different key harmonica, play it with a different groove. So it's very useful on its own. And then we get this lick. which is just pure blues scale. And then he plays this. That's on the four chord. And the bit that follows it, lick three, you get that and then. And that's the bit I really like about his solo is that he takes the rhythm of that lick, uses it again. And I think there's something for us to learn there when we're building solos of our own. Taking an idea, maybe using the rhythm from it, altering the notes slightly, but it, it helps an audience when they're listening to you. It helps them sort of follow along with what you're doing. They're not just random ideas strung together. There's some sort of thought process gone into this. Now, of course, whether Plas Johnson worked out this solo or just improvised it, if he had just improvised it, wow. <laughs> Hats off to Plas Johnson. Um, but maybe he worked it out, I don't know. So we'll move on to lick number four, which comes very soon afterwards. So I've, I've taken the track back to the stop and I'll let it run through and play through to lick four and then we'll talk about it. Here we go. That's, that's it. Now I've put this one in because it goes back to the one chord, but he also uses that rhythm, which he's used earlier on before on the four chord. And then, and now he does. So again, it just means that there's that continuity in his solo, those things that you can latch on to in the solo, which really helps make it such a great piece of work. Let's now uh, change key, and I'm going to um, use my C harmonica, second position, and I'm going to play against a slow blues, and just um, play with some of the ideas from this uh, wonderful Plas Johnson solo. <laughs> So to finish off, um, I'm going to use my A harmonica playing in the key of E, second position, and 
put them against this sort of shuffle blues idea and see how I get on. Try again. Okay, well, look, I hope you found that useful. So until the next time we get that old Mississippi saxophone out, this is Ricky Cool saying cheerio.